Okay then, in my continuing endeavour to try to get some audio modulation out of this thing, I thought I'd give this another go. So, anyway, I've got the RF signal generate open, so we can see all the guts again. Now, I got a comment saying that if I put an audio signal into the AF jack, and I have this thing set onto RF, it should work, but it doesn't. Anyway, I've got this thing to... Anyway, I've got this thing set to mod, so I can use the internal frequency generator. And on this radio here, I've got it tuned in. And if I just turn the volume up, you can hear that, although somewhat noisily. And I've got my scope plugged into the AF jack, and this is what we can see on the screen. So there's the frequency of the audio frequency oscillator. So, anyway, I'm going to put this on to RF, so we can do audio modulation, like the comments said. So that's now on RF, so if I turn the radio up now, we shouldn't hear anything on it. It would also help if it was in the camera shot. It's just empty carrier wave now. So I'm going to plug an audio source up to the audio frequency jack, or the AF jack, or whatever you want to call it. Now I've got a tape player connected to this wire, and it's grounded here. So I'm press play on the tape, turn the radio up, and almost nothing. You can hear something very slightly, but it's very distorted, and it's quite weak. Let's try to tune this a little better. So it is doing something, but it's not working very well. If you look on the scope, because I'm still scoping the AF jack. You can see that it's getting it. Okay, now I've got the schematic diagram of this thing. And the way I see it, audio comes up to this field effect transistor here. And this field effect transistor is responsible for modulating the RF with the audio that it gets. And that's basically how it works. I'm just probing that transistor here on a scope. And we can see the carrier wave. Okay, so I've switched this back onto mod. And now you can see the waveform at the transistor has gone quite fuzzy looking, but let's just turn the time base down. Now we can see the modulated waveform. Or at least we would if I could just get my scope to get steady on that. Okay, so there's the one kilohertz roundabout modulated waveform. It looks a bit nasty, but um, that is the waveform we're getting at this transistor here. And of course, yep, there is the sound. So here's the thing. It's able to modulate that, but it's not able to modulate an audio input, which is kind of weird. Okay, now I've got this switched back to RF. And according to the schematic, any audio signal ends up right here on this leg of this transistor here. And this is back on RF, so we're just back to empty carrier wave. I'll turn this up. And I'll start the tape playing. It's playing into it through a capacitor. I thought I'd better just... So it's not directly connected to that. And again, it's very That's distorted. That's another reason why I don't like limits. You might be able to hear some idiot rambling about how much he hates Linux. Let's just see if we can get the modulated carrier wave. Say something! And some other thing. And another thing. If you want to adjust something in the program, so, you've got to either go into the terminal, type in a whole to be working. Except we've got all that distortion. Now, of course, I could turn this right down. I could, I could turn this right down and try to play again. I've got this connected to the headphone output, so let's play that with the volume turned right down. 
You can see we're still getting the modulation there. But there's all that background noise. Now, here's where things get a little bit crazy. Now, I'm running this off 9 volts from my homemade power supply. And I'm going to put this back on and play the tape again. And then I'm going to lower the voltage coming out of my power supply. And you'll notice something a bit strange. Okay, I'm lowering the voltage. Windows, you just double-click on the thing, it installs, and that's how it should be. Of course, you can run. Listen to that. Don't want, but there is a thing called Wine. Works for some games and programs, but not all of them. I say about 25% of them work flawlessly. The other 75% will work with glitches or, in most cases, not at all. And of course, just because I'm trying to demonstrate... I'm sure, you know, it can look nice. I mean, you know, people have seen that barrel interface and things like that. But again, that's something you've got to go into. Yeah, that was some audio from a rant I was going to do. I don't even know if I actually did that, but... That was back in the days when I hated Linux. Of course, I don't hate it now. I've got completely different opinions about Linux now, but... We seem to be making progress now. I don't actually know what the voltage is that I've put into this thing. So let's just give that a bit. Let's just measure that. So I want to probe on the case. I want to probe on one of the power leads. You can see I'm powering it on about 7 volts instead of 9 volts. And that's weird. It's working much better on lower voltages than what it's supposed to. And I think I figured out why because quite a few of the transistors in this are not the ones that it should use. Because somebody has been in here and tried to replace the transistors and use different ones than what it was supposed to use. One of these transistors here isn't the right one and this transistor here is definitely not the right one. And I don't actually know how good these two transistors are. I mean, they are the right transistors, but I don't know, you know, if they're still good or not. Anyway, I'm going to put this on to FM because there's another little weird thing it does. Which I'll show you in a little while, but I want to show you that the audio quality is much better when I use an FM frequency. So I'll put this onto I'll put this onto FM. Turn that on. Obviously tune it. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to play the tape again. It sounds much better on FM. Let me just unplug that. You need to turn up the volume a little bit. Now, when you do this in Windows, it downloads a little thing that will... If you do this in Windows, it will download into your Downloads folder and... So here we are transmitting on and FM and the sound quality is a lot Windows, better. It will download something and you put it into your Downloads folder and then you can... It's a little bit of distortion there, but um, that's, mu that's sounding much better than what we were with AM. But here's a really, really weird thing it does. Now, I'm going to turn the volume down quite a bit because this is going to go quite loud. Somehow, and I don't know how, now just to prove to you that I'm not jamming another FM station, I'm going to turn this off. I'm just going to turn this right off. Okay, so this is with it right off, and as you can hear, on the radio here, it's just getting static. I'll turn this back on. So we're back on to RF. Now if I turn this... Of course it might not work while I'm trying to demonstrate it. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you heard that, but if I just... Um, let me just turn this down a little bit more. 
I turn this back. I'm somehow tuning into another station with this. I have absolutely no idea how that's doing that. Let's see if it does it again on any other frequency. Now, I should point out that there's absolutely no audio going into this whatsoever. So it's just outputting empty carry away. It's picking up my station of just empty carrier wave on a few harmonics there, but there's the other station that I'm somehow tuning into. Is that weird or what? I don't know how it's doing that. And let me just remind you that I've got absolutely nothing plugged into this. In fact, I will do that again and I will disconnect everything from this. See? No audio input connected. Yet. Somehow I'm taking an FM frequency and turning it into another frequency and somehow uh, I just I just have absolutely no idea how it's doing that. So that's just another endeavor into trying to get this thing working the way it should. Now, if I if I had the replacement transistors for this, I would actually go ahead and do that, but trying to find the replacement transistors for this so I can actually get it working the way it should do is just impossible. I mean, they just you just cannot get the parts anymore. I've even looked on eBay. They do have some of them there, but at a really high price and they don't have all the transistors I need. But at least we got sound out of it. So that's a good start. 